Hey guys, so today we're going to go over the answers to that percents quiz Google form that you're supposed to have finished the first time like a week ago, no more, yeah, like a week ago, and then you had um, this week to revise your answers after seeing your scores. But um, now the the Google form should be closed where you can't change any of your answers or put any new new answers in there, but you should still be able to go and look at it. Um, and uh, and follow along with this video. So what I would like you to do is go open that Google form, like pause the video for a second, go open that Google form and just have it open so that you can see the questions while, while I'm talking through here. All right, so I'm gonna assume that you paused the video and you went and did that and now you have the, the Google form open. So question one is which fraction is equal to 80%. So we want to take 80% and turn it to a fraction. Okay, well, the percent sign here, it's literally, it literally means divided by 100. That's why it, it's a one with two zeros when you make a percent sign. So you can take any percent number if you want to turn it into a fraction and just put the number you see with 100 on the bottom. That means 80, divided by 100 or 80 hundredths, right? So here's our fraction that we're looking for. Um, but we need to simplify that because 80 one hundredths is not one of the options on the screen here. So I quickly see that the top and bottom of this fraction can be divided by 10, so that's 8 tenths. But that's still not one of the options on the screen here. But I also see that the top and bottom of this fraction can be divided by 2, and that's going to get me 4 fifths and that is one of the options on the screen there. That's the one you wanted to select. All right, uh, question two. It says convert three fourths percent to a decimal. And it has a note on it that says, be careful, the answer is not 0.75. It is not 0.75 because that's what most people would put if I didn't put that little like warning on there. Because you see three fourths and you automatically say, oh, three fourths, that's 0.75. But I'm asking you about three fourths percent. This is less than one singular percent, right? Like three fourths of a percent is smaller than one percent. But 0.75, that's the same as 75%. And this, this is not what we want. It's almost like we want 75% of a singular percent, if that makes sense. So whatever our answer is, it better be less than 0.1. Because point, oops, I meant to say 0 0.01. Because 0 0.01 is 1%, right? And this 3 fourths of a percent is less than 1%. So we need 0 0.01. Zero, seven, five. Another way to see this would be to think of um, like you could just convert the three fourths to 0.75, right? Like you know three fourths is the same as 0.75. So that means that this three fourths percent is the same as 0.75 percent. And then when you convert a percent to a decimal, well, you're supposed to divide it by 100, just like the percent sign says here. And when you divide a number by 100, that moves the decimal point two spaces to the left. And so I'm creating spaces for zeros here. And again, I get 0 0.0075, and the percent symbol would now be gone. All right, so that's, that's the one you wanted on that one was point, uh, zero zero 0.0075. Just a little bit less than 0 0.01. All right, three. Uh, convert 0.37 to a percent. This one's easy. All right, when you convert a decimal to a percent, you just want to multiply that number by 100. The reason you multiply it by 100 is because when you put the percent symbol on, it it's telling you to, that it has to be equal to this number but divided by 100. So when you multiply a number by 100, you're just moving the decimal point two spaces over. And so this 0.37 becomes 37. But 0.37 and 37 are equal. 
0.37 is equal to 37 divided by 100. And that's, that's why that works. That's why when you're moving from percent to decimal, you just move the decimal point two spaces this way because you're getting rid of that division by 100. And when you move from decimal to percent, you move the, two, the decimal point two spaces this way because you need to multiply it by 100 so that when you write this symbol next to it that means divided by 100, they sort of cancel each other out and get you back to where you were. So that was the answer you wanted on that one, 37%. All right, number four. Convert 1.425 to a percent, all right? 1.425 to a percent. All right, so we just need to multiply this number by 100. We need to multiply it, we need to move its decimal point over two spaces, one, two. It's gonna wind up between the two and the five. So we get 142.5%. Number five. What is 10% of 30? What is 10% of 30? Lots of different ways to do this. I bet you most of my students could just do this one in their head. Um, but if you're following along with the videos, you know that I would say, okay, well, where you see the word what, let's put a variable to stand for the thing that we don't know. Where you see the word is, let's use an equal sign where we see 10%, let's put 10%, but we don't write 10%. We either put it into decimal or fraction form. And I usually do decimal, so just to mix it up, let me use fraction this time. The word of means to multiply, and 30. So our answer, the thing we don't know, is gonna equal 1 tenth times 30. And if you do some fraction multiplication, right, put 30 as 30 over one, you get one times 30 is 30, 10 times 1 is 10, so you get 30 over 10, which is equal to 3, right? So 10% of 30 is the same as 1 tenth of 30, or whatever you get when you divide 30 by 10, and the answer is 3. All right, number 6. What number is 36% of 72? What number is 36% of 72. So I'm gonna use the exact same strategy I used in the previous one. Where I see what number, that's the thing I'm trying to figure out, right? So let me use a variable there. I'll mix it up and use G. Okay, is means equals 36%, I'll write that as 0.36, of means to multiply, so times 72. All right, and it says that I'm allowed to use my calculator, so let me just do 0 0.36 times 72. 0 0.36 times 72 equals 25.92. All right. Number seven says 72 is 36 percent of what number so this feels a lot like question six where it says what number is 36 percent of 72 but 36 percent is less than half and they're asking you for 36 percent of 72 so you should get a sense that oh my answer better turn out less than half of 72. So, okay, so this answer feels right. In question seven, it's asking you, 72 is 36%, oops, is 36% of some other number. So in this case, 72 is like your part, and you're trying to find the whole, and this part here is only 36% of the whole, meaning it's less than half of whatever number you're looking for. So. So you know whatever number you're looking for has to be more than double 72, right? The number better be like over 144, probably like 180 something, 190 something, 200, 210, somewhere in that range. So um, we could do it like setting it up algebraically like the way I did the, the last couple. Another way you could do this one is that 
if you're trying to find the whole for some number, you might have this memorized already. You just need to do the part that you have divided by the percent. So in this case, we're, try we're still trying to find the whole, but that's going to equal the part, which is 72, divided by 0.36. Okay, and if you do that, that'll get you your answer, 72 divided by 0.36. Another way to get that same operation, which leads you to the same answer, is to set up an equation. 72, 72 is, that's equals, 36%, 0.36 of, that's times, what number? I'll use a variable there. Okay, and so I have 72 equals 0.36 times y. In order to solve this, I divide both sides by 0.36. And so on this side, I have just y now, and the answer is going to be 72 divided by 0.36, which is the same operation I set up over here. Just a couple different ways to, to get it. So let me do 72 divided by 0.36, and I get nice clean 200. All right, number eight. It says, if you increase 40 by 25%, what number do you get? Okay, so increase 40 by 25% equals what? So there's two main ways you could do this question. There's probably at least four good ways, but the two ways that come to mind for me mostly is to, number one, find 25% of 40 and add, add it to 40. And the other way would be to just find 125% of 40. These, these two things are the same thing, right? If you have a number and you add an extra 25%, that's the same as just having 125% of that number. So if you wanted to do number one, you would do 0.25 times 40, or 1 fourth of 40, whichever way you like to think of it, and that equals 10, and then you would add that onto the 40, and you would go 40 plus 10 equals 50. If you wanted to do it the second way, you could just do 1.25 times 40, right, for 125%, and that also equals 50. So two different uh, good strategies to get to that same answer. And there's, there's other good strategies too with like, sure some people could just do it in their head, some people could use number lines. There's all sorts of good ways to get an answer to that one. Okay, number nine. What number, when increased by 25, so some number, increased by 25, 25%, sorry, 25% equals 40. All right, well, here's, here's the mistake that a lot of students would make on this one. This is a incorrect strategy. Find 25% of 40 and subtract it from 40. And so since 25% of 40 is 10, you would do 40 minus 10 and get an answer of 30. 30 is not the correct answer to this question. Because if you try to work the other way with 30, right, the number, when you increase it by 25%, is supposed to get you 40. And if you try that with 30, if you go 30 times 1.25, right, this is going to get me 125% of 30, or in other words, 30 increased by 25%, it's not going to equal 40 it's going to equal 37.5. So 30 is too small. And this always happens if you try to use this strategy of finding um, what is your, your hole in this case. The number that we're looking for is going to be our hole. Um, because what's happening is you're trying, the question says find a number that when you increase it, you get 40. And you're trying to get the answer by doing a decrease by taking a 25% chunk of a different number and decreasing it off, and it never works that way because you're taking your 25% from 40, 
when the with the way the question's written, it says the 25% is supposed to come from the unknown number, and those aren't going to be the same. 25% from this smaller number that's close to 30 is not the same as 25% from this bigger number, 40. So you got to do the question in such a way that that 25% is coming from that other number that we don't know. Um, the two main ways I've shown you how to do this in the videos is by setting up double number lines and by setting up an equation. Um, I'm going to do the double number line strategy on this one. So let me grab another piece of paper because I'm kind of out of room here. I don't know why I grabbed another sheet when there's this one right here underneath. So, um, let's say we wanted to use double number lines on this one. So, this first number line will just represent the numbers we're looking for, or then the numbers we have, and this one here will represent the percents. Okay, and actually now that I look at this question, this is a little different than the ones we've done with number lines. I, I gotta think about how to do this with number lines. How do I make sure that this comes out right? Oh, okay. All right. I, I know how to do this. So the numbers run from 0 to 40, right? And since um, the number that we want is 100% of, of itself, the number that we want, the number we have right now, 40, is 125% of the number we're looking for, right? Because 40 is this unknown number increased by 25%. And so we got to figure out how can we get 125% down to some number that is then easily moved back to 100%. So in other words, this is all about those manageable chunks or factors of 100. And so when I look at 125%, I think about the fact that if I divide that by 5, that gets me... 25%, which would be somewhere over here. But if I do that to the percent, I have to do that to the number that is representing that percent, or is represented by that percent, I guess I should say. So if I divide by 5 here, I get 8. So in other words, 8 is 25% of the number that I'm looking for. Well, now this 25%, in order to get it back to 100% of the number I'm looking for, which is what, what I really want, I have to multiply by 4. And that means that I have to multiply the number that is 25% by 4 as well. And I get 32. That strategy is, honest, in my opinion, a lot harder to do than to just do it algebraically, which would be to just say, okay, uh, what number? We're going to call that x. When increased by 25%, that's the same as just multiplying by 1.25. 5 equals 40. And then we divide both sides by 1.25 and, you know, divide by 1.25 here, and we would get x equals 40 divided by 1.25, but I want you to see something here. 1.25 written as a fraction is 5 fourths. And so in the end, even when you do it algebraically here, what you're really doing is dividing by 5 fourths. And when we did it using a number sense, like double number line sort of way, what did we wind up using? Five and four. This way, you're really doing the exact same operation as you are in the algebra way. It's just you're breaking it down into two steps and thinking of it in terms of like numbers and percents, whereas this way you're thinking of it as like algebra and percents. But in the end, it's a both strategies wind up asking you to divide by 5 fourths or divide by 5 and multiply by 4 or whatever. Same thing. All right, last one. Number 10. Oh, wait, no. There's like a couple more. Oh, geez. Okay. Uh, you are buying a new TV. The price displayed on the TV is $799. Okay, price is $799. Uh, the sales tax in Berkeley is 9.25%. Okay. 
So what is the price of the TV after, after tax? Okay, so we want to do $799 times 1.0925. I had to think about that for a second so I didn't mess it up. Where did I get this number? Well, 9.25%, if I move the decimal over two spots, that's the same as 0.0925. And I could multiply 799 by 0 0.0925 and I would get just the tax amount and then I would have to add that on to 799. That'd be a perfectly fine way to, to solve this question. I just think it's faster and it saves you a step by multiplying by 1.09.25 or 925 because then it keeps the 799 in there for you, right? When you multiply by one and then it tax on the tax for you all in one extra step. So in other words, this is gonna give me 109.25% of the price. So 799 times 0.925 equals seven. I feel like I pressed the wrong button in there somewhere. Hold on, do over. So I automatically knew that answer wasn't right because it was lower than the number I started with. That can't be right. 799 times 1.0925 equals, there we go, that sounds about right. 872.9075. I'm gonna round that to 0.91 because this seven being right here forces this zero to become a one. So it's $872.91. All right, number 11. In sixth grade, Martin weighed 84 pounds, okay? In sixth grade, he weighed 84 pounds. And in seventh grade, he weighed 94.5 pounds. What was the percent increase in his weight? Okay, so let's use this strategy here. Let's first figure out the difference in his weight. Like how much did he actually gain weight just in absolute numbers? So that'd be 94.5 minus 84 equals 10.5 pounds. So he gained 10.5 pounds. Now if we just figure out what percent of 84, 10.5 is, then that's the uh, percent that he increased by. So let's just do part divided by whole, right? We're trying to represent this part out of this whole as a percent. I'm pretty sure I made this one so that the number comes out nice and clean. 10.5 divided by 84. So that's 0.125 you get when you do that. But that's a decimal answer, that's not the percent. Now I need to move the decimal point over two spaces to represent it as a percent, and I get 12.5%. So he gained 12.5% of his weight um, over that one year. All right, and number 12. A car is being advertised as 20% below MSRP, the manufacturer's suggested retail price. So if the car is being sold for 28,000, what was the MSRP? So the MSRP, has to be higher than 28,000. Because this is this is 20% below MSRP, or like basically 20% off the regular price, right? The MSRP is essentially regular price. Okay, so we have to figure out what number did they take 20% off of? An incorrect strategy would be to find 20% of this number and add it on, because the 20% is off of the MSRP, the number that we don't know. Not, it's not 20% of 28,000, it's 20% off of that other number, that other price that we don't know. And so you could use double number lines on this one, but I think that'd be a, a pain in the butt. Um, I think we should just do this alge algebraically. Let's, let's use M for MSRP. All right, and so M, if you have the, the MSRP, you could multiply it by 0 0.80, right, 80%, because we took 20% off of the MSRP. That means that this price here must be the remaining 80% of the MSRP. So MSRP times 80% must equal 28,000. And then if you solve this, you'll have what the, the MSRP was. So we divide both sides by 0 0.80. 
And when you divide a number by a decimal that's like between zero and one, a small number like that, it makes the answer go up. So when we divide 28,000 by 0 0.80, we're gonna get something bigger than 28,000. Divided by 0 0.8, I'll just, I don't need the other zero. So it's 35,000. So the MSRP, the original MSRP was 35,000. All right, and then that last thing, the extra credit, when you got a fraction on a fraction, those have two names. People call them complex fractions or compound fractions. All right, um, you have no other assignment today. I know this video was extra long. Um, the Desmos is you guys had to do this this um, this week were kind of long too. So no other assignment for the day. Just um, use this time to catch up on other stuff if you need it. All right, see ya.